Hallelujah. Give the Lord a big hand this morning. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you all for being here this morning. Thank you, Jody, for opening. Thank you for sharing with us. And Suzanne and uh, the worship folks, we appreciate that. Amen. Leading us in worship this morning. Praise God. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. All of you that are joining us on Facebook and uh, online and however you are via the internet, we appreciate you being part of the service this morning. And I just want to give a shout out. I don't normally do this because I'm leaving other people out, but so if I'm leaving you out, call me, praise the Lord. But uh, I want to just say hi to uh, Don and Darlene. And thank them for their for being such a blessing over the years. But especially, I would like to uh, congratulate them for being great grandparents. <laughs> Praise the Lord! Uh, their grandson Caleb, which most of you know, he and his wife uh, had a little girl, Gabby. Yes, and they had a little girl and named her Naomi. Aww. Praise the Lord! So, uh, Amen. We're excited for them and uh, just want God to be a blessing upon them. And congratulations, Darlene and. Uh, just a, a grand, great grandchild, amen. Blessing, praise the Lord. So appreciate them, and I'm still waiting on that video. Hallelujah. Just letting you know, praise God. But God bless all of you. We appreciate you being a part of the service today. And no distance in God, so wherever you are, He's as real there as He is right here, and He wants to minister to your hearts today, amen. He wants to be a part of your day, part of your life, praise God. So God is good, amen. Exciting what God is doing in the day that we're living in. Praise the Lord. I uh, this this is really has very little, if anything, to do with my uh, message. But so, what else is new, right? Uh, but I was praying this morning, and you know, like anybody else, I get aggravated with our quote unquote leaders and uh, frustrated with what's going on in the world and all of that. And I'm wanting to call down fire, you know, <laughs> forget what spirit I'm of sometimes. And the Lord just spoke to me this morning, and he said, how about praying for him, Nathan? And I thought, really? Yes, I mean, I understand, and so I did. And I truly, I prayed for them to be saved, to be born again, to receive the spirit of God. Was I really excited about it? No, but I did it. I did it out of obedience to the word of God. And to the Spirit of God, because I know he wants them to be saved. I mean, we think about uh, the, the plagues, and we think of it in terms of punishment, but the truth was God was trying to get those people to, to repent. He was trying to save Egypt as the same as he was trying to save Israel. Uh, amen? But because of the hardness of their heart and rejection, they, they, they were doomed to their fate. But anyway, the Lord <coughs> asked me to pray for them, and I did. And about 20 minutes later, I was into something else totally separated from that. And the Lord started speaking to me, and he said, Imagine all of these thousands and thousands of people that are coming up across our southern border and traveling from God knows where all over the nations of the earth, and for, I'm sure, a negative purpose. I can speculate, and we all can, and have our own theories about why, but uh, it's obviously not a good thing that it's intended for. But it, wouldn't it be just like God to raise up revival while these people are traveling? This is what the Lord spoke to me. How about if I just started revival amongst these people as they're traveling, wherever they're from, wherever they're going? And wouldn't it be just like the Lord to slap these people right in the face with a great revival? And these people that are flooding our country are Christians, become Christians, and raise up a, a, a powerful army for God, amen, and for what God wants to do. I'm just saying, God is able to do all things, exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think, and we need to put our confidence in him, amen. What the enemy meant for evil, would, wouldn't it be tremendous, though, to find that all these people coming in, and I know, you say, well, there's all kinds of evil in there. Well, isn't there everywhere? And God is still reaching for people. Yeah, there's, there's all the sex trafficking and all the other horror in this garbage that's going on and yet in the midst of that God could reach right in there 
and save some of the very worst. Praise the Lord. And I think God's going to do something, amen, that is going to turn this thing positive because that's our God, amen. He will not let the enemy prevail over his people. So we need to get excited and be positive about what's going on regardless of what it looks like, amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Thank the Lord. Amen. What the enemy means for evil, God will turn it for good. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He's got a people here, and we are uh, protected. Amen. We have the blood applied. Hallelujah. And so uh, whatever the enemy tries to do, God's going to turn it for our benefit. Praise the Lord. I mean, Egypt came out of there no crippled. Right? I mean, uh, Israel come out of Egypt there no crippled, no lame. With all the wealth of the wicked, hallelujah, stored up, praise God. No reason to believe that God's going to do anything different. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right. Let's, uh, I want to begin this uh, message here this morning. and uh, Let's start with uh, 2 Peter uh, chapter 1 and verse 2. And as usual, I'll probably be all over the place, but hallelujah. Hopefully, I'll end up somewhere. Hallelujah. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 2 grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord thank you Jody grace and peace be multiplied right through the knowledge how does how does how does this grace and truth get multiplied through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord Psalms 145 Verses 10 through 13. Psalms 145, 10 through 13. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So all thy works shall praise thee. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord. And thy saints shall bless thee. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power. To make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. Praise the Lord. So the spirit of revelation is what opens our knowledge of who God is. And from that revelation comes the release of power. Amen. Power from heaven. And that power gives us access to 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of our God and Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these we might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we need to follow after. We need to, to chase this encounter with God that changes our understanding of reality. Yes. Praise the Lord. We can't live life knowing that there are realms of mystery and there are keys to those realms that are available to us and yet not experience them. Hallelujah. That's where the church has been for so long, knowing we have access to all this. It is what Jody was talking about on one hand. It's the grace of God. It's the mercy. It's the goodness of God. And yet we have lived so far below, amen, what God has offered to us and expects us as his children to be walking in and experiencing, amen. We can't afford to live in only what we understand. Praise the Lord. That's why God gives us prophets. Amen. That's why he gives us the gifts of the spirit. Yes. Praise the Lord. God exposes us to impossibilities. And those impossibilities are what force us to have questions that we can't answer. Right. Amen. That's called Christianity, folks. Yep. Amen. It's called living by faith. Yep. Amen. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 5. Proverbs 20 verse 5. Counsel, that word counsel is actually knowing or knowledge. So counsel in the heart of man is like deep water. But a man of understanding 
will draw it out. Amen? So this knowing or this knowledge to understand. So the reason we have it is so that we will understand. It's to know. We have to, we've got to, the deep waters is talking about revelation. Okay, so we have to understand. We have to obey the revelations and put them into practice. It's not enough to just have a revelation. You got to do something with the revelation. You have to act on the revelation. You got to put them into our way of living. Hallelujah. Revelation only takes us halfway there. Experience will take us all the way. Acting on the revelation is what God is after. He's not just giving us revelation so we can go, let me tell you something I know that you don't know. He's given me revelation so I can do some things that I didn't know were possible. Amen. Matthew 4, verse 17. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17. Praise the Lord. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen. Verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Matthew 13, verse 33. Another parable spake he unto them. The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in a barrel. Well, you can paraphrase sometimes. And hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. Till all of it was leavened. Amen. So when we're talking about the kingdom, when Jesus was speaking of the kingdom, he would have used this phrase. Malkut Shamaim. And that is a Malkut is an English translation of that Hebrew word would be kingdom. And that sounds like a place uh, or a government of some kind, right? But it really refers to an ancient sense of the word. And that word describes the actions and the dominion of a king. His reign. His authority. The authority of this king. Or anyone who is under that kingdom. Or that authority. Amen. Shamaim actually is a Hebrew word for sky or for heaven. So heaven, in, when you use it in the, in the way that we're talking here, the kingdom of heaven always refers to God, not to a place. It's not talking about some ethereal place. It's talking about God himself. So in other words, the simple way of translating the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven would be where God's reign or God reigns or those whom God reigns over. In other words, his presence. And those who are subject to his presence or submitted to his presence. Am I making sense? Praise the Lord. All right, look at Luke chapter 22 and verse 29. Luke 22 and verse 29. So I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father hath appointed unto me. Luke 12, verse 31. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. And Luke 17, verse 21. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. It's God's presence. Yes. Amen? So here's a, here's a thing I just read in a, oh, it's in a little biblical uh, Jewish uh, Mishnah kind of writing. And they, it says, every week on the Sabbath, Jews recall the miraculous redemption from Egypt. And they, they recall it with these words. Your people saw your kingdom as you cleaved the sea before Moses. Every week, 
they remind themselves. Amen? They saw his kingdom. They saw God and his reign, his authority, his dominion show up when he cleaved the waters or when he separated the waters. They, they, they're, they're saying, we saw the kingdom, right? So it's like God's power burst in on creation in this awesome way, you know, in this really outrageous, unnatural kind of way, God shows up, right? Like this giant hand just kind of suddenly reaches out and parts the Red Sea for him. And they walk across on dry ground, and their enemies are swallowed up. And we're worried about Joe Biden. Sorry if I get personal, but you know what I'm saying? We, we, we can get so caught up yeah. in the media yeah. and the false uh, kind of uh, way everything is being displayed and, and, and put out there in front of us when we have this almighty God that at any time, if he sees that it's getting too far, he'll just, all he has to do is his kingdom will come. His kingdom has come. Yes, all he has to do is show up. Yes. Well, folks, that's where we come in. And I'm not talking about armed insurrection or anything, and you know that. I'm talking about being the kingdom of God in this earth and seeing what God will do through that kingdom. The same that he's always done. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When Jesus walked on the earth, just think about this. Now he's preaching the kingdom everywhere he goes, right? We just read uh, two or three places where he talked about it. And everywhere he walked, healing and deliverance was manifest. People were getting healed. People were getting delivered. People were being raised from the dead. People were being set free. God's kingdom was visibly breaking into history just exactly as it had done in Exodus. Yes. Amen. One time, those, those that opposed Jesus, you remember the scripture, they, they were accusing him of using demonic power, yeah. amen, to cast out demons, yeah. right? And here's his response in Luke chapter 11 and verse 20. He was making, and it's interesting because when he makes his statement in Luke eleven twenty, he's actually referring back to Exodus, where these uh, Egyptian magicians, Amen, after seeing how they responded after seeing the power of the plagues uh, that were taking place in their land, Amen. But Jesus says, "If I, with the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God has come upon you." Same kind of imagery. By the finger of God. Well, by the hand of God, he splits the Red Sea. By the finger of God, he casts out devils. Well, look at Exodus uh, 8 and verse 19. And this is where he was actually speaking from when he made that statement. Exodus 8, 19. When the magician said unto Pharaoh, now they had seen the plagues. They know they're whipped. The Pharaoh's got a hard heart. He's been totally blinded and he's, a, he's an idiot. But they know all this demonic power we've been conjuring up, it ain't working. No matter what we do, he does something bigger. Right. Amen. So the magician said unto Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. Amen. <laughs> Jesus. But here's where they realized we're whipped. And Pharaoh can go on ranting all he wants to, but we already know this thing is over. Uh -huh. We're just waiting for the, for the final song you know we're going to wrap this thing up because God's power is beyond any demonic force any demonic force that can be conjured up by anybody or any groups of people God's power is greater yes. hallelujah so let's go back to the scene at the Red Sea there's this huge crowd and they're all they're all starting to panic because it looks like the U.S. of A, hallelujah. I mean, it just looks like a mess. It looks like we got the Pharaoh's army charging at us from one direction, and we got nothing but this Red Sea in front of us, and we are S-C-R-E-W-E-D. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's, see, that's nicer than actually saying it. Praise the Lord, because it makes you have to stop doing that. Praise the Lord. So they're, they're freaking out, right? They're trapped. And they know that they're about to be slaughtered. Their lives are about to be either destroyed or totally transformed for the rest of it. 
and suddenly everything changes that quick. The winners become losers. The losers become winners. Praise God. For one dramatic moment, for one, you might even say a split second, the curtain is pulled back and everybody sees who's really in charge, whose kingdom is really being enforced on this planet. Hallelujah. Who's on the throne? It ain't Pharaoh. He's too busy treading water. It's God. It's our king. It's the king of the universe. Amen? And I'm telling you, church, what God is saying to us today, something similar can happen to us. In fact, something just like that can happen. Because we may feel like for a time that we are threatened. We may feel like, man, it's, it's a wrap. We're done. They got everything. We got nothing. All we got, all we got is God. Right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah is right. Praise the Lord. It's our world today. I mean, it's a, just a metaphor for us. Amen. It's, it's like darkness. It's like life is out of control. It's swirling all around us like the Red Sea. And we got all this junk coming at us. And our own government seems to have lost its mind. And it's attacking us. Praise the Lord. And we're looking out in front. And what's, what do we got to look forward to? This chaotic, swirling sea of craziness. And suddenly something happens. God is with us. Oh, God is in us. Woo, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Christ's death and his resurrection. Listen, it was like D-Day. Now, let me just, let me explain something to you. It's like D-Day in human history. Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. It isn't over, but it guarantees the ultimate victory. Yeah. On D-Day, they took, they, they moved in and they knew, we've got them whipped now. Yeah. We're on their ground. We're in their land. We're going to take, we're going to take this. Now, the war wasn't over. They couldn't just roll up and get their sleeping bags out and crash on, you know, on Normandy Beach yeah. or Omaha or whatever beach they might, may have been on. They, they still had war, battles to fight. But they knew the war was won. It's just a matter of time now. And that's exactly what happened when Jesus was raised from the dead. The battle still goes on, but the war has been won. Hallelujah. We've declared victory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. We're still in the battle. We're still fighting. It's still ugly. But Christ has guaranteed the outcome. And that's victory for God. And for God's people. His kingdom will prevail. Hallelujah. We've got to occupy. And to occupy doesn't mean you just take up space. You've got to defend the space. You have to continue to move out and occupy. Praise the Lord. You got to, we've got to release his kingdom. Amen. We've got to release God. But he and his kingdom are one. Look at Luke 18 and verse 17. Luke 18 and 17. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. And that's just talking about faith, blind faith, the faith of a child. They'll believe anything. And I don't mean that in a, in a negative way. When it relates to God, it just means that we've got to be able to believe like a little child does. If you said it, it's going to happen. It's true. It's valid, right? So verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. And now look at Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. Hallelujah. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Now here's what I want you to understand. He's not talking about how to get to heaven. He's not talking about how do we get from here to there after we die. He's talking about having the greatest life possible here, right now, and having the greatest impact in the world that we live in and against our enemies. 
This is what Jody was talking about when she's talking about grace. We are saved by grace. All right, that's a done deal. Heaven, our ticket's punched. We're as good as there. In fact, we are seated with him in heavenly places. This he's talking about the kingdom in us, the kingdom being manifest here on earth. Everybody doesn't get into the kingdom just because they got born again. Right? Everybody isn't operating in the kingdom just because they know God. Hallelujah. He's talking about having the kind of impact the kingdom is supposed to have. And what did we say the kingdom was? His presence. We're not talking about some fenced-in area or some geographic location. We're talking about the presence of God himself. Christ in you. The hope of glory. Matthew said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So again, he's not talking about a heavenly afterlife. He's talking about enthroning God here and now. In us. Praise the Lord. By doing what he says we can do. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's not enough to preach the gifts. It's not enough to preach the anointing and the power. Somebody's got to actually step out and do it. It's got to be more than revelation. It has to be action. That's where the kingdom of God shows up. That's where God is made manifest. He's not manifest in religion. That's just elevating man. It's talking about God being here and now and doing what he says we can do and being what he says we can be. Lay hands on the sick, doing what he says we can do. Lay hands on the sick, they recover, cast out devils. Set captives free. And being who he says we can be. What does he say we are? More than conquerors. We are victorious in everything. Through Christ Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible to you. All things are possible to them that believe. So remember Matthew uh, twenty-two thirty-seven. 37. I preached about this last week. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. All of you. With all that you are, is what he's saying. So are there law? No, we've been delivered from the laws of righteousness that make us righteous. But there are still laws that we are to live by in the kingdom. And that is to love God with everything that we have. And if we love God with everything that we have, we'll do what he says. And we'll love one another. We will be as one. We will be all in one place, in one accord, in one mind. And guess what happens when we do that? The place gets shaken. And the power of God is poured out. Signs and wonders happen automatically without people trying to pray and fast for six months to have it happen. It just is natural. It just comes out of me like words, amen, like water out of a fountain out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Praise the Lord. Look at John 14, uh, verse 12 through 15. John 14, verses 12 through 15. We've got to, obviously, we have to believe in God's love for us. We've got to believe that he has given us grace because he knows as in our natural, we're not capable of doing everything that the law demands. That's why he came in the person of Christ. And now we are in Christ. And Christ is in us. It's another way of saying we're one. The only way you can be separated is right here. And that's why the enemy always comes against your mind. And what does he come for? The word of God. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, 
the works that I do shall he do also. Now, what, what, what is there to not believe that? I mean, it's as much the word of God as God so loved the world that he gave. It's, it's as much the word as John 3, 16. It's as much the word as Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God. On me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works. Woo! He's, he's not even limiting us to what he did. Greater works than these shall he do because I go to my Father. Praise the Lord. Whatsoever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. What are, we, what are we asking in his name? Yes, we're saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, this. Yes. That's his name. Yes. In the beginning, the Word, the Word became flesh, and his name was Jesus. Yes. So when we're praying, we're praying to the Father in the name, amen, in the, through the person of Jesus, if we're born again, and what are we praying? We're, we're praying the word of God because that's all God's listening to because that's all he acts on. He, he does his will. And this is his will. This is all we know of his will. If you ask anything in my name, if you ask anything in the book, in agreement with this book, I'll do it. Amen. If you love me, Keep my commandments. Yes. What did he command? Yes. Go ye therefore. He commanded us from, from Acts chapter 2. Go out into all the land and make disciples. Yes. Win the lost. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cast out demons. Set the captives free. That's the commandment he's asking us to keep. Love me with everything you've got and do what I'm saying. I've empowered you to do it. I've given you the tools. I've given you the ability. But you've got to believe me and do it. See, our obedience is the catalyst for the work of the Spirit. It's the only way the Spirit can work. The Spirit doesn't work just because we have the Spirit in us. If we think the kingdom of heaven is, is like... Jesus' second coming, or, or us going to heaven, we become what the church has become, complacent, yeah. passive, yeah. just a religious group trying to get together and support one another because the rest of the world's against us. We're more than that. We're more than a self-help group. But if Jesus' kingdom is a living, dynamic reality in us, yeah. amen, and with us, a reality that's right now, because God is a right now God, yes. then it's advancing against the kingdom of darkness. This is what I'm saying. As it has been since he said, light be. Science tells you. The speed of light hasn't stopped. The universe is, is continuing to expand because light is still moving. It's expanding the universe. And so there's a metaphor here that I think isn't too far of a reach, and that is that his kingdom increases. He is the light of the world, and if his kingdom has come, his light has come to us, and that light is continuing to press out. The kingdom is getting larger and larger and larger. But the impact of that kingdom is either going to be an impact of God's person being released, or it's going to be just a vast, uh, you know, spacious uh, wasteland, like much of the universe is. Even though light is traveling, nothing's happening out there in, ver in, in most of it. I mean, nothing we could relate to. This is about the heart of God, the heart of the gospel, revealing God, the kingdom, his sovereignty, his dominion. These people that are giving orders and mandates, they ain't nothing. They're not sick of them, as we used to say. 
There's a kingdom that's greater. They're just little kids playing cowboys and Indians. Not knowing that dad's going to come out and tear the fort down at any minute. Let's go back to Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 5. Proverbs 20 and verse 5. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Again, revelation leads to acts. The word of God leads to acts of God. It's not enough to hear it. It has to produce change. It, we have to act on what we hear. I'm telling you, I'm not, this isn't, I'm not saying this in any way to try to frighten somebody or intimidate somebody, but I'm saying we're living in a time. This ought to be a priority. Because I'm not kidding you when I tell you this could all end very soon. Right. I'm not prophesying. I'm just saying all you got to do is have a cursory understanding of the Bible. If you read it and study it at all, you ought to know that if you're going to do something for God, you better get your act together and get busy doing it because you're not going to have a lot of opportunities. Yes. Well, you know, I mean, God's grace, yes. Yes, but one day you're going to stand before the Lord. And I'm not going to say, I'm not saying that he's going to say, you don't get in here because you didn't do enough. He'll stay, you know, enter in thy good and faithful servant. But are you going to go in with joy, feeling like, I gave it my best shot. I know I'm, I'm flawed. I know I didn't do everything. I didn't have it all together. But I tried. I tried to do what I felt like you wanted me to do. That's all he's going to be really interested in anyway. But if we're just sitting around down here thinking, oh, God, just whisk, whisk us out of here. You've missed your purpose in having breathed your first breath all the way through to your last breath. This is serious, church. And God is expecting his children to love him with all of their heart, with all of their soul, with all of their mind. How do you do that? It's not enough. This, Jody said it. It's not human love we're talking about here. This isn't you don't get to snuggle up on the couch and say, I love you, honey. That's not what he's talking about. If you love me, what did Jesus say? Feed my sheep. If you love me, do something for the kingdom. If you love me, act as though you have some ability to change things instead of sitting around complaining and whining and, and, and feeling sorry for yourself. Do something. If it's nothing more than pray and read that Bible until you feel like you've got some power, some anointing, some, some understanding. This is not 1969. We can't just smoke another joint and listen to another album and think that everything's going to be all right. I'm not judging. Don't, you know, all right, so don't, I'm not saying that. I, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, come on, let's put as much effort, let's put as much of ourselves into this relationship with God and these last days as we did in trying to fulfill our own desires and our own joy and our own happiness and our own kind of purpose. Yes. Praise the Lord. See, I can do this because I don't care how many people show up. Because look around. What are you going to take? I mean, hey, I started out with a milk cart, uh, carton upside down with a rag over the top of it preaching to the neighbor kid and my wife. Bless her heart. 
So you don't intimidate me with numbers. I'm not bothered by it. I'm just doing what I'm doing. You know, Sally says, whenever I get down in the dumps, I just go buy a hat. I said, now I know where you're getting them. Praise the Lord. Down in the dumps. Sorry. Praise the Lord. Well, I digress, obviously. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Just a light note here. Try to get too freaked out on me. Praise the Lord. If we don't act on what we hear, it's not complete. And here's what I'm trying to get across to you this morning. The kingdom hasn't really come until it has come in you. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. So God has to be birthed as a natural outflowing of his word, of his truth, through faith and action. Praise the Lord. James chapter 2, uh, verse 17 through 26. James 17, or excuse me, 2, verse 17 through 26. Stay with me because I'm going to get even weirder here before we get out of here. Praise the Lord. <laughs> even so, faith, if it had not works, is dead, being alone. So faith without works is dead. Now we get all kind of a little squirmy. After what Jody said, what Jody said is absolutely scriptural. It's like it come out of the mouth of God, Jody. What I'm saying is not about works to get God's approval or to get him to love us or to give his forgiveness. I'm talking about works based on what his word says. In other words, we're not ignorant enough to think that I'm going to cast out demons by laying in bed on Sunday morning. or Tuesday morning, or any other morning. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's going to have to be an action yes. that is in agreement with what his word is. Yes. Yes. That's, that's manifesting faith. That's showing faith, yes. right? So even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God. How did God know he believed him? He acted in faith based on what God had said. So he was, it was imputed to him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Praise the Lord. Acts chapter 2, verse 17 through 19. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dream. Or your young men will have visions. Your old men will dream dream. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. There's a Hebrew word that's... Uh, and I'll probably mispronounce it, but it's chiasma or chiasma. It's C-H-I-A-S-M-A. -A, and it means in verse. And so it's a pattern in Scripture. The last will be first. The first will be last, right? He who exalts himself will be humbled. He who humbles himself will be exalted, right? It's, it's throughout the Scripture. Amen? It's a pattern, and it's throughout God's Word. And the end is to be as the beginning and the beginning as the end. Now, this isn't unique to me. I'm just sharing something with you that, that should help us 
to understand the times and how we are to supposed to live, how we're supposed to be operating, right? Yep. So look at Matthew chapter 24, verse 36 through 39. Matthew 24, 36 through 39. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. Now we're talking about the return of the Lord. But he says, but, the, but of that day and hour knoweth no man. Not, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also, or so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as it is in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the, into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Praise the Lord. So there's a guy, a contemporary of Adam's, by the name of Methuselah, the longest living man, right? The name Methuselah means when he dies, judgment. So now there, that doesn't mean they knew the day or the hour. They just know as long as this guy's alive, it's cool. No judgment. But once he dies, it can happen anytime now, right? So he's giving us a picture. As it was in the beginning, so it shall be in the end. No man knows the day or the hour. So that brings us to a Jewish festival. By the way, Jesus, Yeshua, was Jewish. So it might not be too much of a stretch to figure that he would use some Jewish idioms, feasts, and other things to get our attention. In Jewish liturgy, it's written, quote, which festival upon which the new moon is concealed, unquote. Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah. right? Feast of Trumpets, but he's talking about that feast. That feast, which is a festival upon which the new moon is concealed. The sound of the shofar on the new moon. By the way, the sound of the shofar is also a, a type of revelation, when it's a blast of, uh, of revelation. Well, they say that this uh, feast or this festival, it's in concealment for the day or of our festival, it says. They're talking about the moon, because the new moon is what begins the festival. It's how the festival is started. In fact, They'd have two watchmen go out and find a high place that's open to the sky, and they would watch with their shofars for when that new moon would appear. Because it doesn't appear the same every year. Not at the same time, not even on the same day. There's a two-day period that they use for that celebration. It's the only Jewish feast that has a two-day window. And it's because they never know what day it's going to be. They can't set a date, this is going to be October 20th, or this is going to be September 15th, or whatever. They, they don't know until they see the moon. So they have these people watching. Think about the, the kind of uh, uh, analogy or the, the, the way it kind of relates to us. You know, you, we should be watching. You know, look up when you hear the trumpet. So what do they do? When they finally, whenever it is they see that beginning of that new moon, that little... Uh, they, sometimes they say the silver crescent. They'll look up, and when they see it, they blast on the shofar. It's revelation. Guess what? Time to start the festival. Start, time to start this feast. Amen? Look up. The sound of a trumpet. When you hear the sound of the trumpet, look up, for your redemption draws nigh. It's interesting because it's over this two-day period, they never know what day it's going to be. They don't know what hour it will begin. It could be cloudy. It could be overcast. Right? The weather conditions could impact whether you could see it or not see it. But as soon as it's seen, the shofar is blown, the sound of the trumpet, and they're told to look up. Now, it's interesting, too, that the very next feast, 
is Yom Kippur, the day of atonement, the day of our sacrifice. That's what Kippur is. It's atonement. It's what is atonement? How are we atoned? How are our sins atoned for? By the sacrifice. And the next one is celebration. It's joy. That's why so many people believe that when the Lord comes, it will be in the fall feast. But it doesn't mean that it will. It just, what he's telling us is just the same thing that he told us with Methuselah. After this, it can happen anytime. So here's what I'm trying to close out with. We've been talking about the kingdom. We've been talking about the power of God. We've been talking about how that relates to us, how we're supposed to be interacting with this and cooperating. The Father and I are one as much as the Father and Jesus were one. Yeah. Amen? So this chiasma or chiasma, in the beginning of the age, Israel disappeared from the world. They were scattered everywhere, right? I'm talking about the, the beginning of this last age, this, you could say, dispensation. But it's prophesied in the end, Israel would reappear in the world. As it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. The chiasma. In the beginning, Jewish people will be scattered. But it's prophes prophesied that at the end of the age, Israel would be gathered back to their own land, to, the, to Israel again. In the beginning, the Jewish people were driven from Jerusalem, right? The temple was destroyed in 70 AD, and it wasn't long. That's when they were destroying. They were killing them left and right. Jesus even prophesied about it. God help you if you're here, if it happens during the winter, or if you're with child and all of that, right? So he tells them they're going to be driven from Jerusalem. But it's also prophesied through the word of God that at the end of the age, they must be dwelling again in Jerusalem. Our true president declared Jerusalem to be the capital of Israel and put our embassy there. One of the Christian things that he did, I'm not saying he was a perfect Christian, I'm just saying he cooperated with God. A Cyrus kind of thing. But in the beginning of the age, believers in Jesus were persecuted. Because of an anti-Christian culture and civilization. Praise the Lord. And so at the end of the age, there's going to be, again, it's, it's prophesied, an anti-Christian world civilization or culture, amen, and persecution against believers in Jesus. And we're starting to see that right here in the United States. It's been happening around the world for a long time, so this isn't like it's just happening. It's, we're starting to experience it. Hallelujah. At the beginning of the age, Jesus left this world from Jerusalem. Amen? So at the end of the age, he's going to return to this world and to Jerusalem. And at the beginning of the age, believers in the book of Acts preached boldly, doing signs and wonders and miracles by the Holy Spirit. And it's prophesied at the end of the age, they will do the same thing again. Amen. We are to be that people. That's the point of everything I'm talking about here this morning. Amen. So live as if you are one of them. Stand as they stood. Go forth as they went forth. Overcome as they overcame. The kingdom has come and it's in you. Revelation is becoming experience. And that's what I feel like the Holy Spirit is saying to all of us. Let's quit playing around. Let's get serious. Let's identify who and what we really are and why we were born for such a time as this. Yes. This thing is going to roll up like a scroll. And you better be involved. I'm not saying it's, you won't go to heaven. I'm saying 
you're going to feel very disappointed. If there's tears in heaven, I don't think it's going to be because of that Bentley I didn't get. Amen. It's going to be because I could have done so much more. Who I might have influenced. You're not going to get a chance to talk to these people again. When it's done, it's done. There won't be any salvations taking place in heaven. There won't be any healings. There won't be any deliverance. There won't be any need for prophecy. There won't be any need for tongues. We'll have the tongue of God. We'll be speaking, you know, however that works. I don't care. I just know I will know all things. I'll be known even as I am known, as I am today. So it's not like I get to be a different creature when I get to heaven that it won't have a memory of anything that I've ever done or had. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I'll just be delivered from the guilt and the shame. But I'm going to have the same personality. <laughs> That's kind of disappointing for some of you. But, you know, it's a big place. You don't have to hang out with me. <laughs> just saying. But you, do you understand what I'm saying? The seriousness of this is that God's expecting us to be who he created us to be. Yes. If this kingdom comes, it's going to come in and through us. We've got to quit putting this off, thinking that, well, next year, next year. I've just told you, I just read to you. Everything that needs to happen has happened. No man knows the day or the hour, but I can tell you this. Methuselah and the new moon has been spotted. So we know it can happen anytime. And I want to be part of it. I didn't, he didn't keep me around here this long just so I could talk about what I did when I was 30. Amen. He kept me around this long because his purpose for me was now, yes. not then. Yes. I just had to live then to get to here. It's not, we're not accidents. We didn't get here by accident any more than Esther got to where she was by accident. God chose the time for you to live. The potential, the purpose, and the destiny for each one of us. Suzanne. Praise the Lord. And I'm, I want to encourage you. N not to be judgmental, not to put guilt trips on you, but I want to encourage you, read your Bible and pray. Yes. If it's just a short period of time, just do it. The more of, of that connection that you have with the Word, if it's just a chapter, if it's just you know some verses, and spend a few minutes at least in prayer, Make the connection. Yes. It, I, I, he's trying to shift our thinking. He's trying to shift the, our, our focus from all of the negative, from all of the crap, to him. Doesn't mean you can't still have your life, your children, your grandchildren, your, you know, you know, your social stuff. But it ought to be balanced with the time that we're living in. And what God wants to do. He created you because he's got something he wants to do through you. And you say, well, I, I don't know what that is. Take the time to read a little bit and to pray a little bit. And you might find out. None of us just wake up one day and go, okay, I got my thing. It's as we walk, yes. the doors open. As we move, he does things and gives us opportunities and puts people in our path or whatever it might be. But we all have a, have a specific gifting, whether we can acknowledge it or understand it or recognize it or not. It's there. You have it. You could not exist without it. Amen. So you heard Suzanne, what Suzanne has spoken. 
anybody that wants prayer for that or for anything else, but for that specifically, come and let her pray with you and believe God. Yes. Receive what God has for you. This isn't about, you know, trying to embarrass anybody. We all got fear. We all have questions about our spirituality and our, you know, influence and so on and so forth. All of us, believe me, no matter how we talk and act as though we got it all together, we're all totally dependent on God. Amen. The only difference between the person who's laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover and the person who isn't is the person who is laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover knows that they have the ability to do that. Yes. It's not their power. It's the, it's the kingdom of God that is in them. And he's wanting to come into everybody's life. And there's never been a better time. I mean, this is better than the book of Acts. That's why he said, greater works will we do. Why? Because greater works are going to be needed in this last day revival than were needed in the very first. And the, the end will reflect the beginning. It will look like the beginning. So, you know, it got pretty ugly before Noah's flood. It got pretty ugly during the book of Acts. But man, did God show up in power. Hallelujah. Just imagine one day shaking hands with Noah and said, yeah, been there and done that, man. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be stupid. I'm just saying we're all of the same stock. Yeah. Yeah. We all have this ability. We all have this potential. I mean, I need to quit looking at these people as some supernatural spiritual giants. Well, they may have been spiritual giants, but only because they gave in to what God said. They were people just exactly like us, and you don't have to read very much to find out they had all the same flaws and all the same failures and all the same weaknesses we have, and yet be, they believed God, and God used them mightily because it's God. It's his kingdom. It's his power. It's his authority. It's his dominion. We just bear it. Hallelujah. We're just carrying the ark. Hallelujah for another miracle. God bless you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. You're dismissed. Receive the prayer. Be blessed in Jesus' name.